This week's episode of Better Life, Better Business is brought to you by CANC Video Productions. Since 1985, CANC Video has been providing live streaming, event production, and analog to digital transfer services. They capture those life changing moments, preserving your history for current and future generations. Because your history matters. Visit their website at cacvideo.com. Thank you so much for your sponsorship. Welcome back to Better Life, Better Business with local business coach and time management expert, Christoph Nauer of Balance Six. I'm your host, Rebecca Troxel, founder and CEO of Rebecca's Vault. Now, I have to admit, I'm very excited for this week because we are discussing goal setting. I love setting goals for myself, and I love it even more when I have that feeling of accomplishment when I achieve those goals. I know a lot of people struggle with goal setting, though. What's the number one most important thing for people to do when they're goal setting, Christoph? Well, first, I want to start out and congratulate you because you're among the 3% of adults who have clear written goals. Yes. So that sets you apart already. Okay, so congratulations, Rebecca. Thank you. Um, and as I said in the previous podcast, these people actually accomplish five and 10 times as much as people of equal or better education and ability, but who, for whatever reason, have never taken the time to write down exactly what they want, okay? So if you're watching this episode, you've probably seen the last one on clarity and made the decision to become part of the 3%, I hope, okay? So um, my na business name is Balance Six, and that's the why we set goals not just in one or two categories, you know, money. Of mm -hmm. course, we all want money because that's why we ultimately got into business for ourselves, right? right. The six categories are, besides time and money, they include health and relationship, self-improvement and higher power or spirituality if you have a belief in a, in a uh, being of something beyond yourself. So let's start with money, okay? Because that's all what we want, right? Yeah. We want more of, okay? So what would you like your net worth to be? Your income, your investments, your charitable contributions? because it's always good to look at that too, to give back out of, you know, gratitude for what we have. Um, what is it, what kind of business would you like to have? And then the other big component, uh, time, time management. What kind of work-life balance are you having? What vacations will you take? especially once COVID is over right now, the yeah. vacationing is a little bit limited, but you can still take time off mm -hmm. because we know that if you take a vacation, you live longer and you're actually happier, more productive when you come back. Yes. What are your office hours? Leave work at work and not at home. Well, now that we're working at home, that's a little bit more challenging, okay? It's harder, but, yeah. Know, right, you know, to make that separation between work and non-work hours. If you're fortunate enough to have a home office with a door, you can always post those office hours on that door. So when you catch yourself walking to that door outside of office hours, stop and turn away. Um, for instance, you can decide after six o'clock, no more emails. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how do we get started identifying what our goals are for each of these categories? Can you give us some examples maybe? Sure. I was uh, actually working with a client a few years back. She was a single mom of four kids, and she uh, was trying to uh, launch her real estate business. Um, and so she was just working insane hours all over the board, constantly on the phone, constantly, you know, dealing and wheeling. And of course, there was very little time for her kids. Mm -hmm. So slowly and gently, I introduced the ideas of office hours. And she said to me, you don't understand my industry. And I said, you're correct, I don't. I'm not a realtor, I'm a coach. But I can tell you one thing. If you don't make time for your kids, they will resent you. Mm -hmm. You know, And time means you be present for them and with them, not just physically present. 
So it took a while to take that advice seriously. And, you know, whatever we have to unlearn a habit, it takes time. But she eventually did. She implemented office hours. She put it on her email signature and the outgoing voicemail message. And now she's running a multi-million dollar business that has about five or six uh, members on her team. Wow. So the next two categories I want to mention are health and relationship. In the health category, how much do you want to weigh? What energy level, emotional level, body fat level would you like to have? What kind of exercise are you doing daily, weekly, et cetera? If you're on a diet, what does that look like? What food supplements are you taking? How much time will you spend in bed sleeping? It's a key component. We actually all know we should sleep seven to eight hours a night. Relationship, you know, the one with yourself. You That's know, an important one. Yeah, the whole idea of self-respect. We have to respect our own self and, and take ourselves seriously and take care of ourselves. Yep. With significant others. If you have kids with kids, with relatives, business associates, employees, friends, and then, of course, what I always recommend, if you're in a committed relationship, have a date night. Oh, date night is a tr tricky one. It's one of those things that you, in theory, want to do, but usually out of guilt for some reason, it gets put on the back burner. So I know a lot of people face that obstacle of feeling guilty. So how can our listeners get past that hurdle? I get overcoming guilt. Yeah, that's a good one, Rebecca. And mm -hmm. I can tell you, you know, from my own experience, my wife and I, we always felt guilty. We always working full time, raising three kids. And so we felt guilty about leaving with a babysitter. But one night we were just like, okay, we need a break. Yeah. So we lined up a babysitter, you know, and as we were pulling out of the driveway, the kids were standing on the top of the driveway with the babysitter and they were chanting. Guess what? Party, party, you know, kind of like celebrating that we were leaving. Yeah, go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. My wife and I look at each other like, there's something wrong with this picture, okay? We feel <laughs> guilty for leaving them with a the babysitter and they're throwing a party. Well, nice. you know, life with a babysitter is different than with the parents. And that's fine. And that's the way it should be. But it gave us a chance to recharge our batteries, to be away from it all, and then come back and again, be the parents that our kids deserve. Not the leftovers, you know, but the, you know, and the kids learn uh, how to parent by watching the parents. Mm -hmm. Let's face it, you know, I mean, I did. And sometimes I probably repeated some of the mistakes my parents made, you know, and, and so forth. Um, but that's why it's so critical that we take care of ourselves and our relationships, because nobody else will. Block yeah. time for that. If you can't do it uh, once a week, you know, at least start once a month, okay? Um, well, that's where we started. Do you remember what happened when you told me to have a date night once a week? Whew, I had no idea how I was going to make that work. And now I'm like, it's Friday night, it's date night. Yes, and I think it doesn't necessarily mean you have to go somewhere. It can just be quality time together without any interruptions, you know, yeah. if you don't have kids. If you have kids, yes, then you probably need to remove yourself from those other rascals, okay? Because you yeah. need a break. <laughs> For sure. Um, next, I talked about if you believe in a God or higher power, what do you do to nurture that spiritual side of you? You know, are you praying, spending time in meditating or praying or whatever that is? Um, Self-improvement. So the fact that you're watching this podcast, it shows that you want to improve your, you know, your business. You want to learn something. And that's critical. So what do we do on a regular basis? You know, lastly, 30 minutes a day adds up to 180 hours a year, which is a lot of college credits, you know, yeah. for, for, you know, I don't remember what it really adds up to because my college years are way in the past. <laughs> um, we have to talk about new habits that we need to develop so that we can accomplish these goals. We have to look at old habits, those that are not really conducive anymore, that keep us, hold us back, and we need to drop them and overcome them. Yeah, that, this is great. You know, now I know how to decide what I want my goals to be for each category, but what would my next step be? How do I achieve these goals now that I know what they are and I've written them down? 
Well, first of all, those goals have to be SMART goals. And most business owners have probably heard that terminology. You know, there's, I use one specific uh, definition that are others out there, okay? Doesn't mean it's the only one. Okay. S stands for specific, significant, stretching. M, measurable, meaningful, motivational. A, agreed upon, attainable, achievable, acceptable, action-oriented. Those are all possible terminology, uh, explanations and definitions. R for realistic, relevant, reasonable, rewarding, results-oriented or driven. And then the T, of course, stands for time-based, time-bound, timely, tangible, trackable. Um, so that's is that's why it's so critical. So for instance, I'll give you an example. If somebody says, I want to lose weight, that's not a smart goal because I can go to bed tonight and wake up tomorrow morning and I lost a few ounces, bingo, okay? Goal accomplished, right? Right, you know, but for instance, if you want to be, make it a smart goal, it could be something like, I want to lose 20 pounds by, you know, May 31st of 2021, so that I can fit again in my smoking hot red dress for my sister's wedding, you know, for a woman. So that all of a sudden takes on a whole new, um, right? Uh, you know, importance. It takes on a whole new life of itself because it's very clear. It's very specific, measurable. It, it, the whole, everything is there. And in top of it all, there's the why attached to it. Why do you want to do that? Because my sister's getting married and I have this really smoking hot dress that I want to wear for that wedding, you know? So, yeah. so it becomes a whole different ballgame than just an idea or a dream. Right. Um, sometimes we need to work on our subconscious mind. You know, when we have our you know, negative thoughts and tape playing inside of us that gives us all the reasons why we can't do this, that, or the other thing. We cannot let that tape play because... Mm -hmm. It undermines everything we do and it's actually holding us back. Yep. So if clients have that tape playing, this is probably one of the first things we'd have to address. Okay. Things can actually be done about that. You know, we know now that affirmations can really help. You know, the a fantastic book is out there by John Asaf, another one of my mentors. It's called The Answer. And in it, he works with a scientist who talks about how the brain works. And then he talks about how, now that we know how the brain works, how we can use positive affirmations to recondition the subconscious mind. Because 95% of everything we do is driven by the subconscious mind. Next, then after we have these goals, as you said, and now they're small goals, then we need to look at what do I need to do in the next 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, et cetera, to achieve these goals. We have to develop strategies, I mean, what, and tactics, how. Mm -hmm. We also have to decide who will do what. You know, do I do it myself? Do I get help doing it? Do I get it done for somebody from somebody else? Hire somebody to do it? Or eliminate it and don't do it at all? So decisions sure. that have to be made, you know. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure that after our, now, after all this, our viewers have a different perspective of their goals, I would assume. I the so. information you gave us today is incredibly valuable and important, but it is also a lot of information to take in and apply. So what's a really great first step to implementing everything we discussed today? Well, I would suggest you have a conversation with me to go a little bit deeper. Because I want to thank you for watching this episode. And as a thank you gift, I'll offer you a complimentary business breakthrough session. You can email me easily at life at balance6.biz. Or you can also go to the website, balance6.biz. And there's a contact form there that you can send to me uh, also. Um, so I'm available. I'd love to talk to you and see if maybe I can help you get to your goals a little bit faster. That's a really generous offer, and it's one that I hope our viewers take you up on. Goal plating is half the battle, but I know having you help me for the last six or more years has made a huge difference in my implementation. I realized in doing this vodcast with you today, I've actually accomplished every single one of the goals that I've laid out with you, and some of them I've even accomplished ahead of schedule, so thank you for that. 
Um, well, everyone, that wraps things up for today. Thank you for joining us. And don't forget to use the links below to check out the Balance 6 website or send Christoph an email so you can schedule your complimentary business breakthrough session with Christoph. We'll see you next week. Thank you so much. That's all for now. Thanks for listening to another episode of Better Life, Better Business with business and time management coach Christoph Nauer with Balance 6, the leading business and time management company in Northern California. Visit them at balance6.biz.